Welcome to Creepy Holiday Stuff. Thanks for popping in and checking out my little story time while I finish creating Reagan from The Exorcist. Hey, did you know The Exorcist was inspired by true events? Well, it was. Pretty frightening to know that. Let's go back in time. Back in 1949, there was a boy named, we're going to call him Roland Doe, because in all of the research I did that they use either Roland or Robbie. The family did want to stay completely private. They weren't looking for book deals, publicity, TV shows, interviews. They didn't want any of that. They wanted to continue on with their quiet lives and not have any of this known after all of this took place. So we're going to refer to him as Roland. So Roland was 14. He lived with his mother, his father, and his grandmother in Maryland. He was an only child. Um, he had an aunt who he really, really cared for and enjoyed spending time with. That was his Aunt Harriet. His Aunt Harriet was a spiritualist that liked to dabble in the Ouija board. So she introduced Roland to the Ouija board and he began playing it and really enjoying it and having fun. For anyone that doesn't know what a Ouija board is, it's been around for a very long time. Also known as, as a spirit board as well. Um, what you have is a board with a planchette. A planchette is, um, it's like a pointer. It's made out of wood. It has a little disc underneath. There's a little, some of them have a little a circle in the center that you can see through. And what it does is it points to these letters that are on the board. Also, in your original ones, they have your yes and your no on the top and right, um, top left or right corners. And you're supposed to be able to communicate with the afterlife so they dabbled with that played with it together and, it, and just had fun he really enjoyed being with his aunt harriet but she soon passed away not too long after she introduced him to the ouija board so roland took that really hard he he really cared for his aunt and losing her was was very difficult for him and he apparently continued playing with the Ouija board, maybe trying to contact his Aunt Harriet. But what is said is that during that time, shortly after she passed away, very strange occurrences began to happen, along with Roland's behavior, becoming a little more um, erratic. Uh, his moods were different. They began hearing some scratching and dripping, and they were confused because it was getting a little eerie. So they investigated. They had pest control come out to see if there was mice or rats, hoping that's all it was. Searching the pipes, I guess calling a plumber. Could never find any drips. Okay, so now things are getting weird. No explanation for this stuff happening. And Roland continues to be acting weird. So they went to physicians, they went to a psychiatrist, just trying to find what could possibly be going on. Because a lot of these sounds and um, almost like poltergeist activity kind of surrounded the area of Roland's room as well. Well, they couldn't find anything. The doctors couldn't find anything wrong with him. The psychiatrist couldn't find anything wrong with him. And they were at their wits end. They contacted their uh, Lutheran minister. And after he observed the boy, apparently observed the bed shaking, and he just said, you know, you need to contact the Catholic Church. They are familiar with dealing with things like this. Um, he wasn't. So... Um, that's what they did. And Father Hughes was the first priest uh, to perform an exorcism on Roland. Um, now, what happened there was, I guess Roland really became uh, violent and um, hard to control. So he was restrained. And I didn't mention he was taken to a hospital. 
a hospital there for Father Hughes to perform this exorcism. So during that time, he was able to bust out of his restraints. He reached down and he grabbed one of those spiral metal bed frames and he just slashed Father Hughes from the wrist to the elbow, severely cutting him. And Father Hughes had to stop. He had halted the exorcism um, and suggested they, you know, speak to the church um, and look for other fathers to do exorcisms because he just, he couldn't do it. I imagine he was horrified. It was just too much for him to handle. So before doing so, um, these very strange occurrences continued happening to Roland. And he ended up, because he was getting scratches and welts on his body, and his family noticed a scratch on his torso or chest area that spelt out Lewis. So his mother took that as a sign that, oh my gosh, maybe, I, maybe we need to move him to St. Louis. They had family there, and they would contact the Catholic Church there. Um, so that's what they did. They moved to St. Louis. And that's when Doc, uh, Father Bowdern and Halloran became involved. They were granted um, granted to do an exorcism by the bishop or archbishop. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, among other people that assisted in this um, exorcism, it wasn't just them. And there was a diary kept. Um, I've read certain um, articles that Father Bishop kept, kept a diary, and then I read articles that Father Bowdern and Halloran kept a diary, but apparently there was a diary kept, and they all signed after each experience, you know, daily, because this exorcist went on and on. Um, and there was actually a couple of exorcisms done to the boy, but the one that... Uh, lasted and was the final was he was in the um alexian brothers hospital in st louis uh, that's in missouri so as his exorcism took place the boy would exhibit horrible horrible um things he had outburst he screamed he cursed at the priest um he would go into like a trance-like state he was known to spit. He could spit, apparently, I don't know how many feet. It, it was a very, very far distance. He would be able to spit directly into one of the father's eyes. It's crazy. Objects would move around. Um, he would also react very violently to sacred objects. His bed would move around. It would shake. Uh, Father Halloran stated that a pitchfork shaped on his thigh in like a scratch from the thigh all the way down to the ankle showed up that's i mean that's horrifying can you imagine this went on nightly i believe the exorcism lasted about six weeks in total um and it said that uh, the Sunday after Easter, the boy had, I, I read different articles during my research on it, that the boy had yelled out, Satan, 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 this is St. Michael, you need to leave the body. And then some just say that the boy um, sat up and had a vision and, and told the fathers that, he had seen St. Michael battling the Satan and, and he felt fine that it was over. Um, there was also numerous witnesses saying there was a huge explosion sound when that took place. And a lot of people knew that it had something to do with the boy in that room. And apparently there was a huge bright light and that's when it ended. That's when he 
you know, came out of the trans light state and, and said what he said. He said he saw this vision. And Roland ended up, after that, living a normal life, uh, no other occurrences. He, uh, I believe, got married and possibly, um, you never know on the internet, but there is some articles that say that he passed away in 2020. Um, because of internet people that are able to find almost anything, uh, they came up with the name Ronald Hunkler. They believe that is the name of the true Roland Doe. But I guess we'll never know. Um, in 1993, the author Thomas Allen uh, wrote a book on Roland Doe's exorcism, demonic exorcism, and it's called The Possessed. Um, and most of that is based on Father Halloran's uh, accounts of what happened during the exorcism, but that sounds like it would probably be a good, good book to read if you're interested in that. But overall, what a terrifying experience. Um, I can't even imagine. It is said that that uh, hospital room was boarded up where this took place and then ended up getting torn down. Uh, something else built there, so they say. But um, I want to talk a little bit back about the movie itself, William Blady's movie, The Exorcist. There was a lot of talk, and you'll find stories online too, that they believed that you know, making that movie that the set was cursed. Uh, they had a lot of setbacks. They had injuries. They had deaths. Um, the first set they used um, for the home burnt down. Well, it burned a lot. And it was an unexplained fire. But strangely, the room used for Reagan, you know, Linda Blair's character, that room didn't burn. But the rest did. That's pretty creepy. Um, Jack McGowan, I think it's McGowan. Um, he actually died a few months before the film was even released. And he was the guy that played Burt Dennings. He was the friend uh, that was at the little party that evening uh, where Linda Blair comes down, you know, and pees on the carpet. Um, but he was the funny guy that was drunk and stuff. And strangely, he actually, um, his character died in the movie as well. It's weird. Um, Ellen Bernstein, she's the mother. And she suffered a terrible injury. There's a scene where she is yanked. She actually has a harness uh, attached to her and yanked backwards, flying across the room onto her back. And she didn't want to do that. She didn't like that. She was worried about it. She knew she was going to get hurt. It was scary. But they really wanted a realistic look, you know. They wanted it to really look like she was flying across the room. And so in that scene in the movie, when you see her flying across the room backwards in, in Reagan's room and hitting her back, you're going to hear a very loud shrill and scream. And it was actually real life scream she suffered a spinal injury at that very moment and because it was so realistic and obviously they couldn't do the scene again um that's what you're seeing in the movie so that is super crazy um i had read about carpenter i read some that said the carpenter on the set had lost his fingers and then i read one that the carpenter actually lost his thumb nevertheless a carpenter on that set lost one or more of his fingers um i know there was some death some within the the actors or or the set crews immediate families and stuff there's stories and i think there was like nine total that took place um like jack mcgowan is one of them and but there's more and i didn't do too much reading about all of them but you could find it online if you look um, Linda Blair actually received many death threats. Uh, it's sad and unfortunate because she was just a child. You know, she was young doing that part. Uh, but she did receive death threats 
after making that movie and um, she said she actually had to have bodyguard for about six months after that to protect her. Oh, and another crazy thing. Um, the first showing of this movie in Rome was between two tur- churches. The theater was right between two churches. And the sky was loud. There was thunder and lightning. And one of the crosses was struck by lightning during that first showing in Rome. And I believe, I don't know who had it done, but they ended up having a Jesuit priest come and um, do a blessing on the cast. Um, on the set because it was getting scary and I I can't blame them you know you're you're making a movie on demonic possession dealing with the devil it, it was just ooh, scary so you can imagine how scared everyone must have been feeling with all these weird happenings occurring all around them so we can also take a moment to look at the skepticism There's a lot of skepticism, um, paranormal and supernatural beliefs associated, for example, with the Ouija board um, have been criticized because a lot of people said, you know, that's it's that doesn't even work. Um, It's just a unconscious movement controlling that planchette, the pointer. a lot of people felt that the boy was just a, a young boy, teenager, wild hormones, and just kind of went along with what was happening and exaggerated everything. And as for, because he did talk in languages, uh, tongues and stuff, and and he, people, uh, actually one of the father, what father was, I don't remember what father said this, but he felt that, uh, maybe the boy was just mimicking them. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. How do you explain all these witnesses seeing things float around the room, flying across the room? Um, the bed shaking. Skeptics claim, well, he could have shook the bed himself, you know, really shook his body. and Well, maybe, maybe so. But what about the claims that he levitated there are those claims that he levitated now hollywood did make things a little bit way overboard just for entertainment reasons for the movie the exorcist for example the pea soup spitting out and throwing up everywhere that was not documented on happening in the real case um 360 degree turn of the head in the movie the exorcist was not documented in you know the real case But you know, when Hollywood gets a hold of a movie, it kind of gets blown a little bit overboard. But it did make it so much more um, chilling and scary. You know, so you can't blame them there. But the bottom line is, you know, you have to believe what you believe. Uh, If you think it was real, you think it was fake, I'd love to hear your comments below.